It's 1 p.m. I just woke up and wow, it's bright outside. Gotta shut the curtains. Fortunately, they're blackout curtains, so I don't have to see the outside world. My name is Vincent, and this is a day in the life of an introverted entrepreneur. My life can be summed up in this room, safe and isolated. I never step foot outside, not even to use the bathroom. You may wonder, how do I get food or water? Well, I get everything I need from this bucket and rope. I throw it out the window with a note of what I need, and usually, someone walking by notices. I don't like interacting with people, animals, or even insects. Some may call me shy or socially awkward, but I call it bliss. I'm just kidding guys, this isn't what my day actually looks like. I noticed on YouTube that there's not a lot of love for introverts out there, so I wanna dedicate this entire video to all the introverts out there. So are you guys ready to see my actual day in life? Let's go. I wake up around 6 a.m., give or take 15 minutes, depending on whether the sun is already up already. The first thing I do is check my phone for emails and texts, which frankly, I don't get too many of because I don't really talk to many people. If I do get anything, I don't respond right now because there's something else, something else that's really important that I need to do. I get out of bed and walk in a very determined way. Directly to the bathroom where I get on with my business and start responding to people. Come on, Vincent, can you speed it up? We're recording right now. Finally. I then change into my workout clothes and head to the gym. Contrary to what you think about introverts, I do go to a public gym with people around me, but true to the stereotype, I keep my headphones on the entire time so no one can talk to me. Not because I don't like to socialize or anything, but because the gym is my, how do I say, my me time. It's one of the few times that I get to be alone in my own head and not think about anything. Instead, my ears are drowned in podcasts like Freakonomics, Up First, and No Stupid Questions. I love to exercise mainly because I love eating cheese and I'm lactose intolerant, so I always feel bloated. And exercise is kind of the only thing that gets rid of that feeling. Oh, and also the mental and physical health benefits too. It's, it's, all, it's all really great. When I get home, I make my coffee. Usually I have my roasted coffee beans ready, but I wanna look cool in this video, so let's roast them together. I roast my own beans because it means that I don't have to go to the supermarket and I can avoid other people. Just kidding, I roast my own beans because it's significantly cheaper and fresher. Now, I'm not a coffee snob or anything. Heck, I'll even drink Subway's coffee if it's ready there, but this is something that I value because it brings me a lot of joy. So I do spend more than 20 cents a cup. I'm still a super frugal person, by the way. I just aggressively save money in other areas that I get less value from. While I drink my freshly brewed bean water, I bust out my iPad, read the news, and go over my schedule for the day. And by the way, I'll share my best strategy a bit later on how I plan my calendar that significantly increases my productivity. At this point, you might be wondering, wow, that's a nice iPad keyboard case. And you're right. It's also the perfect time to thank our friends at Logitech for sponsoring this video. I use the Combo Touch keyboard case on my iPad because it allows me to use it in so many different ways that I wouldn't normally be able to. With this keyboard case, I can easily open it, drop its kickstand, and start typing on its lit up keys that automatically adjust to my environment. Or I can manually change the brightness up here. And speaking of up here, it also has a full row of shortcut keys, so I don't have to move my hands onto the screen to do things like changing my volume, my brightness, or my music. Super convenient when I'm in the zone and just typing away. Also, it's easy to move my iPad pointer anywhere on the screen with this large trackpad that also supports gestures. But my absolutely favorite feature about this keyboard case is that I can easily detach a keyboard, put my iPad flat on the table, grab my Apple Pencil, and sketch out ideas in a second. This is a game changer because it makes my iPad more powerful and flexible without sacrificing protection or design. The keyboard case looks super classy with its woven fabric, which feels really great on your skin. And it wraps around each side and corner to prevent any bumps or scratches. If you're interested in your own combo touch keyboard case, check out the link below. Well, would you look at that? It's 8 a.m. now. This is when I get ready, brush my teeth and shower in warm water, by the way. I know a lot of entrepreneurs do cold showers, but eh, I prefer to be comfortable before getting to work. In about 15 minutes, I'm ready and I plop myself at my desk and begin working. I skip breakfast today, not because I practice intermittent fasting, but because I'm just not hungry at this time, so I don't eat. If I was hungry, I eat something small, like an Asian bao or a banana. I prefer to do more cognitively demanding tasks in the morning because that's when I think the clearest. And it's also the easiest time for me to flow into deep work. My mornings vary day to day, but usually I'm working on a couple of projects. One is my free daily newsletter, where I give you a quick summary of the most important market news that you can read in under one minute. 
I also spend time writing up research reports after I analyze stocks, I run DCF models for my Patreon members. I'm also scripting and editing these videos to make sure that they're decent and be able to provide as much value to you guys as possible. In between this, I'm also responding to Discord emails, phone calls, comments, messages from you guys, you know, the whole shebang, and also trying to think of more project ideas. And I think that's it for the most part. Oh, and also this, filming. <laughs> filming of videos, like what's happening right now. I usually work until 12 and then it's time for lunch, which is about right now. Today I have some leftover noodles with some hot chili sauce. One thing about lunch for me is that I really have to watch how much I eat because even if I eat a little bit too much, which I usually do, I get the dreaded food coma. And then I get too lazy to think about work and I need to just lay out flat on the floor until I feel better. Or if it's a super stressful day, I'll drink another cup of coffee, but then I won't be able to sleep later. I'll be wide awake in my bed at night thinking about the most silly things I did, like that I re-racked the weights at the gym earlier. I'm done with lunch in about 40 minutes and then I get back to work. Now, people don't usually think I'm an introvert because, well, I guess because of this YouTube channel, but I really am. A lot of people don't actually understand what being an introvert is, and it's not the common stereotypes that you always hear about, about being shy or not having any friends or being socially awkward. Introverts and extroverts can be defined by how you recharge after an exhausting day. Introverts get their energy back by being alone, like watching a movie or reading a book by themselves. Extroverts, on the other hand, they feel recharged by being around others, like hanging out with friends after a long day of work. And I've noticed that there's a lot of extroverted personalities on YouTube, especially in the personal finance space. So I thought it'd be really important to make this video. In terms of entrepreneurship, many people think that introverts are at a disadvantage, but I don't necessarily agree. I think we have a very unique set of beneficial skills that extroverts might not have. And I'll even share with you some of my best advice for introverts who want to start their own businesses. As an introvert, I can focus for really long periods of time without being distracted but that's probably because I don't get very many texts or messages from people. I also like to think really critically about things before I talk about them. So I may be quieter in certain situations, but that's because I'm collecting information and analyzing it in my head so that I can provide value when I speak instead of some people who I've worked with who just talk to talk. You know who I'm talking about. I also feel like I have a strong sense of self-awareness. I know what I'm good at and what I'm not. And I'm able to identify gaps in my skills, my knowledge and competence. And if I'm weak in something, I either try to improve it if it's easy or avoid it completely because I much rather focus on my strengths. I believe if I spend a significant amount of time and effort trying to build on my weaknesses and the best I can achieve is only marginal improvements, then I'm misallocating my resources. Whereas instead, I could be focusing on improving what I'm strong in so I can get even better more easily and truly be able to differentiate myself from others. If you're an introvert and you want to be an entrepreneur in this extroverted world, my biggest advice to you is to play to your strengths. And you wanna think about this strategically. As an introvert, you probably have skills that most extroverts don't have and you need to flex them. Focus on going deep instead of wide because that's what's gonna differentiate you. Don't pretend to be like an extrovert and pretend like you're more social than what you're comfortable with because you're gonna underperform compared to natural extroverts. And trust me, it's totally possible to make it as an introvert in this world. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, all Warren Buffett, I'm sure you've heard of them before, they're all introverts and they're all really successful. Now, there are gonna be times during your entrepreneurial journey where you do wanna fake it till you make it, but this particular thing is not one of them. If you do wanna talk more on one-on-one -on -one about my experiences or our introvert experiences or anything, add me on Instagram and let's be friends. I usually wrap up work around seven, do a big stretch and then get ready for dinner. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I absolutely love food and cooking. If I had to pick one food to eat for the rest of my life, it'd be soup dumplings or si long bao. It's the most perfect single bite of food ever invented. Imagine a very soft, thin dumpling wrapper on the outside with seasoned pork, crab meat, and flavorful soup on the inside. And then you douse it in Chinese black vinegar and ginger. It's delicious. Chef's kiss. Oh, and also fun fact, I try to make this a rule whenever I go out to eat is that I try my best to avoid places where I can cook the food better myself. Like I really don't like going to diners, especially in New York City when you're paying easily $15 for regular eggs, some frozen bacon, frozen sausages, where I can make it at home in a few minutes and for significantly cheaper. Before I end the day, here's one of the strategies that I use to be super productive the next day. The night before, I plan out my calendar and block out time for the task that I need to do for tomorrow. I found this strategy makes me more 
more accountable because I can visually see what's on tomorrow's roadmap. It helps me wake up early and prepare to get to work instead of wondering what to do the next day. And now I just chill out until I'm ready for bed. Now, I don't think my day looks very different from someone who isn't an introvert. If anything, the difference would be the things that I'm comfortable doing. I'm fine with being alone for long periods of time. I'm fine with not catching up with friends for weeks, not because I don't care about them, but because I respect and value their time and mine. I'm fine being in my own head and just thinking to myself. I don't necessarily share all my thoughts and ideas with others, but trust me, I always have something to say, but only if I feel like sharing it.